Yes, it is one o'clock on a snowy Saturday afternoon in April. Uh, thank you so much for joining me, Paige. I am the owner of Smudge Art Studio for our second online painting workshop. This afternoon, we are going to spend the next hour and a half painting our Hydrangea Masterpiece. This is a lovely masterpiece because it's not supposed to look real. Um, it is supposed to be colorful and relaxing and it's actually quite easy because it's just a whole bunch of little swipes. So I'm going to take you through that process. However, before we get started, you want to make sure that you have some certain tools in front of you. So the first thing that you will need is a canvas. So this time with my canvas, I outlined mine in blue marker. Yours won't be, please don't do this. Um, I will be able to see my lines after I paint over top, even with acrylic paint. I just did this so that you could see it a little bit better. So I hope that has helped a little bit. Uh, for those of you who got your canvases outlined by Smudge or myself, uh, you have numbers on your, seriously cat, you have numbers on your hydrangeas. So the way we're going to paint this is you have number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five, because we always paint from the back to the front. So that being said, we are going to start with the background, just so you are aware. So you will want to have two different sizes of brushes. I am using a one inch and a half inch. You shouldn't need anything smaller than that. Those should be completely sufficient. I've also got four colors and black and white on my um, canvas or on my palette, my nice beautiful paper plate palette. So I've got black, you could also use an umber instead. I've got a dark blue, I've got a magenta, I've got yellow and I've got primary magenta. So if you got your paints from, oh and white of course, if you got your paints from Smudge, those are the colors that you received as well. And you'll notice that you have the primary colors. So for those of you who are like, I don't have green, it's okay, we're gonna make green. Or I don't have purple, it's okay, we're gonna make purple. Or I don't have orange, it's okay, you can make orange. So if you have any questions throughout this process, I am going to encourage you to please unmute your mic and ask me. Because I'm going to have my head turned a lot of the time to the canvas, I'm not going to be able to see if you pop up a message and it doesn't stay on my screen. So if you do have a question, just unmute your mic and please do ask me. That is why we are doing this live so that I am here for you. Um, the other thing, of course, that you will want, and I've just got my other brush in here, but you'll also want a bucket of water or a jar of water or something. This should not be near your drink because you will put your brush into the wrong thing. Been there and done that. All right. And you will want to have a paper towel because you want to wipe your brush off before you rinse it and you want to wipe your brush off after you rinse it. You don't want to have painty water and you don't want to have watery paint. So the paper towel is essential, especially because you guys are painting at home. You don't have the paint traps that they have in art studios or that we had at Smudge. So you will definitely want to use that paper towel. Paint, if you do this over time, Paint can build up in your drains, especially the acrylic, it is a plastic. So you don't want to be dumping this paint down your drains. A bit in your water is fine, but that big gunkiness that it can get really should go on to paper towel. All right, artists, it is, what time is it? 104, are you ready to start painting? All right, so the first thing I'd like for you to do is grab your biggest brush. So I have my one inch brush here. And I'm going to wet the bristles because I always like to do that. The only time you really want to have a wet brush is when you're doing a dry brush technique, which we are not doing ever in this painting. Now, in the painting that you saw online, the background is done with white and umber. For those of you who got your paint through smudge, I apologize, I didn't have any umber here. So we are going to do a very, very, very light gray background but it is your masterpiece, so please feel free to do whatever color you want. If you want to have maybe a beautiful pale uh, yellow background, that would be lovely. Maybe even, um, I don't know, the dark blue if you wanted. If you wanted to have a dark gray background, that's entirely up to you. 
So what I will say, artists, is you never, ever have to do what I am doing. You never have to do the same colors. If you want to have pink leaves, rock on. This is your masterpiece. You decide. However, if you are going to do a, ba a gray background like me, you are going to take quite a bit of your white. So I've got quite a bit of my white. And just a touch of black on the same brush at the same time. For those of you who have painted with me before, you know that I like messy backgrounds, smudgy backgrounds, streaky backgrounds, so that um, it doesn't look perfect. Painting shouldn't be perfect. They should be messy and goofy and fun, in my opinion. So um, we're going to take this paint, and I'd like for you, because I kind of want you to get a little bit of that black off first, you're going to do a little bit of a swipe up here in the top right corner. You're going to do a little bit of a swipe over here. That's mostly just so that we don't have so much black going on. I am going to dip into my white again, and we are going to lay down some paint in this top right corner first. So artists, I am going to encourage you to very slightly go over top of those hydrangea lines, just in the littlest, smallest amount, as well as your leaf lines, and just a little bit. Now, artists, if you can see mine, I'm touching very lightly because if I press a lot or if I go over top of it a lot, it's just going to turn to one shade of gray, and I don't want that. I like the streakiness. So if you like those streaks, you're going to do that as well. All right, and I've got some white and some black again, a little tiny bit. You can hardly see it. And I'm just going to start in the top left corner. And I do like um, vertical strokes. I think it looks a little worn, kind of like the waters run down the background. Um, there's lots of different strokes that you can do. Um, a lot of the time I'll do like X's just to give it a different look. If you want to do horizontal streaks, you can do that as well. And we're just going to take these streaks down our background. Now we're down the left hand side. And you can see the more I go over top of one spot, the more it turns into the one shade of gray, right? Now you also have a background, and I don't know if you can see, in this bottom left hand corner, you've got a little bit of a background. And you've got a slight little bit of a background in the very bottom between hydrangea number four and hydrangea number five. Okay, all the other ones, this is a leaf, a leaf, a leaf, a leaf. Artists, while you've got your color on your background, you can also go ahead and paint the sides of your canvas. I like to do this um, if you have nothing touching the top of your canvas. You can also take your color up there and around the side again. I like to do this. I just feel like it makes the painting look a little bit more finished. I think a lot more streaks. So artists, just enjoy laying down your paint. We're not really in a rush today. So it gave us an hour and a half. Do this one. All right, so artists, as you're finishing up your background, again, the background doesn't have to be perfect. This is not what we're focusing on. Our focus today is on our hydrangeas. The smallest amount of black will go a very, very, very long way. Black eats up color. So if you are using any black, just use the smallest amount of it. And again, the more if you don't like those streaks, just blend that color in. If you want it just a straight gray, fantastic. A light yellow is beautiful as well. Um, you decide it's your masterpiece. So artists, while you're doing that, um, again, I just want to thank you so much for joining me on our second at home uh, workshop. Again, this is live. I am sitting in my kitchen at my house. So if you do have any questions, please unmute your mic and ask me. That is why I am here. When you are done your background, you're going to take your brush and your paper towel and you are going to wipe. So try and get as much of that gunk out as you can. You're going to stick your brush in the jar, gently rub those bristles along the bottom, get some movement. This is acrylic paint, so it won't just come out 
by you um, squishing it in water. Tempera paint or watercolor paint will do that. Acrylic and oils will not. And so you want to get your brush very clean. Get the black definitely out of your brush. The white is okay. You still have some white left, but the black you will definitely want to get out. So artists, for my next step, I am going to make green. For those of you who don't remember how to make green, it is yellow and blue. And if, for those of you who are using your own paints, you can brighten up your green. So if you want it more limey, you can add yellow to it. If you want it more pale, you will add white to it. And if you want it more dark, you're going to add blue to it. So artists, when you're ready, we are going to make a pretty good amount of, of green because, well, maybe a tablespoon because we've got four leaves to go, right? So I'm going to take, I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to scoop a little bit of this blue and I am going to scoop a little bit of this yellow too. Now you'll notice I scoop from the side so that I don't contaminate the rest of my yellow. And I'm just going to dab it or fold it gently with my brush because I don't want to get paint built up in my bristles. You kind of want to keep your brush, your bristles together as much as possible. Ooh, that's a really pretty teal. Ooh, that was not what I was expecting. So if it's too dark, you will need more yellow. And artists, you want to have just a little bit more than you will think you will need because we are going to use this throughout and we're also going to use it for highlights later. So my green is a, it's a little on the dark end for me, but that's okay. I am going to um, just do this leaf right here first. So we're not going to do all the leaves. Actually, I'm wrong, sorry. I'm going to do this leaf here and this leaf down here. So we're not going to do all the leaves. Again, we're starting at the background and we're working our way forward. So I've got my medium or my smallest brush and I've got some green that I've made and I haven't even cleaned out my brush because I'm going to outline first. Ooh, that's a really pretty cool. So outline first and then fill in. Don't worry about it not looking like a leaf. We're going to add highlights later. This is just our first coat. And again, I'm going to outline first. So I've turned my brush on its side to get a thinner line. Also, this is the same process as cutting in your walls, right, where you use the edge of the brush. The edge of your brush should be your prep. It should do the work for you. Actually, the brush entirely should do the work for you. If you feel like you're, um, it's taking you forever to fill in something, you've got too small of a brush. And vice versa, if your brush won't fit, you've got too big of a brush. All right, artists. So I've got my background and I've got those two leaves done. That's all I'm going to do for right now. I'm going to wipe my brush out. I'm gonna stick my brush in the jar, rub those bristles on the bottom. Get some nice movement going on in your bristles. Get all of that paint out. And artists, we are going to now start our hydrangeas. Now, you can decide if you would prefer larger petals or smaller petals. And we're not going to worry about the petals being so perfect. We're not going to worry about, um, you know how I think hydrangeas, anyway, they're, they're beautifully shaped. We're not gonna worry about that. All we're going to do is we're going to take our brush and we're going to do a swiping motion. So I'll do that with you first before we actually land our brush onto our canvas. 
But the first really important decision that you need to make is what color is hydrangea number one going to be? I have decided that I would like hydrangea number one to be blue. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my blue and divide it into three different piles. So you don't have to move them far, right? I can just take this bit and move it over a little bit and maybe take this bit and move it down a little bit, okay? Just so I've got three different piles going on here. And what I'm going to do with those three different piles is I am going to lighten each one, well, two of them up ever so slightly. Remember, you could always add more white. You cannot take it away. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of white, hardly anything. And which one do I wanna do first? I'm gonna do uh, this one here. It doesn't really matter, but I just want three different piles of whatever color of hydrangea I've chosen. So if you're going to do an orange hydrangea, which you can do, it's your masterpiece, you decide, you're going to pre-mix, or if you're going to do violet first, you're going to mix your color first. So if you're going to do violet or purple, you're going to take some of this blue and you can decide if you want a darker, more um, burgundy sort of violet, you're going to use this darker magenta. If you want something that's more uh, pink based, more lilac color, you're going to use the phthalo or the primary magenta. No, sorry, I think this is phthalo red actually. Anyway, the pink one. And you are, that is going to be your base. Remember, however, if you want a, a pink hydrangea at some point, you're going to need some of that paint left over. So artists, I just want you to take your base color, of whatever color your first hydrangea is going to be. I'm going to do blue, and I'm making three tints. So a tint is when you add white, and I'm just gently mixing it. I'm trying not to build up too much in my brushes. And I'm gonna add more white to this one over here because I want this one to be super pale. Okay, so when you mix, you're just kind of poking it, you're kind of being annoying or you're gently folding it. But you definitely want three different tints of your chosen color. Now artists, when you're done that, you don't even have to clean off your brush. However, you do need to decide if you want little swipes or big swipes. So my smaller swipes, I'm going to use my smaller brush. If I wanted bigger swipes, I would use my bigger brush. And basically the swipes are your petals. And I'd like for you, now this action, when you do your hydrangea, it's not a dab, so that's different. So it's not a dab, it's not a tashing, this is tashing, it is a swipe. So you're going to take your brush, and I'd like for you to test somewhere, anywhere, on your palette, on a piece of paper, on a paper towel, and you're going to swipe. And you're going to have the brush do the work for you. You see that? They're just, they're little brush strokes. They're actually swipes, okay? So you're actually physically swiping your brush. You can start with, with, with whichever tint you'd like. If it's the original color, the dark, or the light, it's entirely up to you. And we are just going to start swiping. And you can see that I am not even thinking about where it's going. That's the best thing about this afternoon is we are not going to think. I don't want any of you to go, oh, well, I need some more light blue there, or I really need dark blue there. I don't even want you to think about it. I just want you to take your paint, and I want you to swipe. Now, we are going to go outside of our lines a little bit, and I want these to be random swipes, so they're just kind of everywhere and anywhere. Um, do go, when it comes to your leaf over here, get as close to those lines, if not over top, as much as you can. I probably did too much there. And next, change your hue or your tint, I should say. So we're not even gonna clean our brush unless you've got too much buildup, you've got too much left over. 
and we're just going to start swiping again. And artists, to be honest with you, I'm feeling like this is really dark, so I'm actually going to lighten, do more uh, white. So I'm just going to take what is ever left over on my brush, and I'm just going to start swiping some more. And see how it's got those beautiful smudgy lines in it? I love that. And artists, we're not even thinking, okay? So I don't want you to think, if your leaf is still really wet over here, try to um, not hit it. And artists, we're literally just filling in space. So don't even think, this is not a thinking activity this afternoon. Anywhere where it's white, it's a game. So I just need to wipe some of that paint off my brush so that I can get more of this dark color. And they're just short little swipes. See how tiny they are? And artists, if you are actually starting to take paint off of your hydrangea, off of your canvas, you need to have more wet paint on your brush. I'm probably doing maybe three or four swipes before I realize that I need to have more paint on my brush because I physically want to see the, these petals. So at no time do I really want them to blend into each other. Go all the way down there. And artists, if you really want to, you can even just take a pure white and smudge it in. Go over top of your lines a little bit. You don't want to have any white. And pure white just breaks it up a little bit. And because we're going over top of wet paint, it's going to smudge together and that white is going to turn a little bit blue. That's so pretty, right? So take another look and make sure you've got all of your canvas covered. Don't even worry about the direction. This is Mother Nature. I talked about Mother Nature last week. She's random. Um, she does whatever she wants, and so artists, I just want to make sure that you're covering your lines, that you're going over top, and that you're covering your canvas, okay? Once you're done that, you are going to wipe your brush out because we are actually going to do leaf number three, this one over here. And don't worry, I'm going to pause for a sec because I know y'all are going, I'm all done my hydrangea yet. Probably because you're thinking too much. So stop thinking. Just swipe. And artists, please do let me know if you have any questions or if you're not sure what I'm doing. So I am here talking to myself. Maybe the snow cleared up my um, reception though last week. My internet was a little fuzzy, foggy. And if you are done your hydrangea, grab your drink, take a sip, just enjoy. I hope you have some nice music going on at your house. If not, find some. Hopefully people have left you alone for the afternoon. Your pets aren't bugging you. Mine have finally all gone to sleep, I think. So artists, when you are done filling in your hydrangea, again, they're just swipes, okay? It's not dabs and it's not tashing. They're physical swipes of your brush, just really short swipes. Probably for every dip, three, four, maybe five before you need to dip again, you always want to have wet paint on your brush. 
What you're going to do when you're done your hydrangea is if you could please wipe your brush out, rinse it out really well, and we are going to move on to leaf number three, I guess. The one in the top right here. So the reason we did that after we did this hydrangea is because it's sitting over top. So I'm hoping that you guys got close, if not just over just a touch, into this leaf. And if you didn't, you're just going to paint right into your hydrangea. And it's okay if your colors smudge, it's lovely. Maybe we should make a new game. So when we used to do the paint and this is well not used to, when we do do the paint and sips, I feel so long now. When we do do the paint and sips, anytime we say smudge, it's time to take a drink. So you could play that game at home if you wanted to. All right, artists, when you're ready, you're going to grab that beautiful green that you made before. Again, have the brush do the work for you. So I'm using the brush on its side. My bristles are together quite well. And I'm outlining first. Now, if you have a shaky hand like I do, I set my pinky on my canvas when I'm doing things that need straighter lines so that I can bounce. And you're going to fill in. So again, outline first. And then fill in. And yes, I am going into hydrangea number two just a little bit. Okay, don't worry if it doesn't look like a leaf it's supposed to, we're going to add highlights later. When you're done that leaf, you're going to wipe and rinse your brush. And we're gonna pause for a minute. I'm not very good at pausing because I can't, I can't see where you guys are at. <laughs> it's really different when we're at workshops. That's what I love about workshops. I can see where you are. I can interact with you. Um, I hope none of you are feeling like you have to stay quiet the whole time. If you do have a question or a comment, please just unmute your mic and let me know. Now the fun thing about this masterpiece is you don't really want your same color hydrangeas to touch each other, so it's a little bit of a game. Um, but I might actually take uh, another blue hydrangea and put it in number four or number five. But I definitely don't want that same color, the exact same color, in number two or number three. I could, maybe I wanna make it a little bit more purple. Um, maybe I actually wanna make a purple. Um, now that you have those three piles, if you have piles left over, all you have to do to them to make a purple now is um, add red to it. But remember, if you use that whole pile, then all that blue is gone. So you can't use it down here. Okay, so just keep that in mind. If you need some more blue left, take only some of what you need. Again, if you want to make an orange, you can take this magenta and yellow and make an orange. If you want um, this uh, pink, the phthalo red and the yellow make a really pretty corally sort of color. So as you're trying to figure out which color you want to do next, oh, and pale yellow hydrangeas or white hydrangeas with a bit of a yellow in them are really beautiful as well. I think I am. I'm going to take a little bit of this blue. I'm going to take a little bit from each of my blue piles, just a little bit, not a lot because you want some of that paint left over. And actually, this pink here, I'm just going to drag some of that pink in. And I'm going to make it a little bit more violet.
spring. So down in that pile there, I took some of that blue that I had. I'm just going to create more of a, a softer purple. If you use the red magenta, it turns into more of a, like think of the purple calla lilies, those really pretty dark burgundy ones. It turns into kind of that color there. And artists, you can always add white to your colors. So if you feel that they're too similar, those three different piles that you're making are too close, you can add them. Now, you cannot mix all three of your primary colors together. If you do, you are going to end up with mud. So please ask me before mixing colors together. Like I can't take this purple now that I've done and add yellow to it. It'll gray it first. A little bit of yellow will just make it more gray and then it will actually um, mud it up. So artists, you may want to take some of your white. So this is your flower, your hydrangea, you decide. But I am just gonna add some white into this one here. And so, yes, your beautiful paper plate palette should be a little bit messy. And notice whenever I take my paint, I'm always taking from the side. So artists, when you're ready, when you've got a new color off and on, we are going to do hydrangea number two. Use the same size of brush unless you want to change your variety of hydrangea because it is actually going to change the entire look of your painting if you change the size of your brush. And I am just going to use my medium brush. And again, we're going to start on number two. And you are going to go over top of your lines a little bit. And you're just going to do little random swipes throughout. And maybe next you wanna change your hue a little bit. And the game here is to cover up your white. Do swipe your brush though the size that you want your petals to be. Okay, and artists, without having to rinse your brush, you can actually just scrape out the excess paint on the side of your plate if you want. Um, that way you don't have to get uh, water inside your bristles. I don't even want you to think about where you're laying your colors down, okay? I just want you to switch between your three tints of the color that you've made. And again, you can dip directly into your white if you want to and smudge your color into there as well. And this is a game. You're just filling in the whites or the, yeah, the white spots, the canvas spots. And you can go over top of the other flower if you want to over top of that leaf a little bit and because we're on an edge and I should have mentioned it up here too but you can take this color around the side if you want Again, artists, if you enjoy painting at home, we are going to, I'm going to try and do this every weekend, at least one a weekend. Um, next week, I'm doing my Pink Moon Masterpiece. It's brand new. Can you guys hear my cat in the background? She's playing with something. If she's bugging you, please let me know. I'll take it away from her.
And again, artists, it's just random swipes that we're doing here. Just filling up our canvas. Oops, that was a lot of weight. So artists, when you're done with hydrangea number two, you can wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush. Pretty easy, eh? Who thought hydrangeas would just be a whole bunch of little swipes? That's all. Just swipes to fill in space. That's it. It's not meant to look perfect. It's not meant to look just like a hydrangea. It will when you're all done. It's just meant to be a lot of fun, really pretty. I love all the smudges. And you'll notice if you go over top of one color too often, it turns into the same color everywhere, right? So you'll want to keep your brush constantly clean-ish. Scrape out any excess paint. But when you are done hydrangea number two, you'll want to take your brush, scrape out, or right, wipe out the rest of your paint and rinse it out really well. And you probably notice those really you probably notice those really tiny piles that you've made. You still have a good chunk of of paint left, right? So you can use that paint again or you can um, change it up a little bit by adding more blue or more pink. Or if you made an orange, adding more yellow. Artist, how are you doing? You'll let me know if I'm going too fast. So again, just enjoy laying down the paint. Don't think about this. Just enjoy your paint smudging together, getting those nice different tints of that color that you chose. we are going to move on to hydrangea number three. You know, I know we're all sick of the snow, but at least hopefully it'll mean we're going to have a nice wet spring okay not too wet hi hi how do you make i'm i'm so far so good how do you okay, make it again like lilac -y color so you're going to use that pink that i gave you so not the red but use the pink as well as the blue and that will give you so use more pink than blue so it'll give you a softer purple but if you use more, oh, I just got paint all over my hands. Um, if you use um, more blue than pink, it turns more. It turns more dark. So start with your pink and add a touch of blue to it, just a tiny little bit, because you want your lilac color to be more more on the pink side. If you want a deeper purple, you're going to use the darker red. Okay. 
So artists, if you do have questions, just unmute your mic. If you don't have a question, just mute your mic. I am recording this one. Um, it is going out to those who purchased the recording. We're not going to, we are going to record our future ones, but I'm not going to do them separate. Um, took me a couple weeks to figure things out, but it was a good learning experience. And I think I did. So our pink moon is a little different. Uh, you purchase the link for sure. So the link comes with the recording and then you can purchase your supplies through us um, or you can just, Michael's is doing curbside pickup. And to be super honest with you, the outline for next week is really easy. It's a horizontal line and a circle. So um, if you do want to do that yourself, um, I would encourage you to, not that I don't love making your canvases for you, but if this is something that you're going to continue to do, you might as well grab your own art supplies um, and, and have them available to you so that you don't need me, right? You can sit at home and paint whenever you want. Painting is so good for the soul, and especially the last, has it only been three weeks or four weeks? I don't know, it's just felt like two years. Um, and so I just feel like painting is really needed right now. Art is really needed to get that right side of your brain flowing and going and just, just relax, just a good time to relax. All right, artists, are we ready to go on to hydrangea number three? I'm taking no news as a yes. Awesome, thank you. Okay, artists, so again, same process, whatever color you want hydrangea number three to be, I'm going to do pink. So I'm going to take the rest of my pink and put it into little piles and add white to it. So for those of you who have your own paint, yes, we go through white a lot. White and yellow are actually the colors that we go through the most quickly. So if you are going to buy your own paints, those are the two uh, tubes that you'll want to have more of. And really, if you are going to buy your own paints, you only ever need the primary colors and black and white. Umber is nice to have as well because umber can darken your color without overbearing it. Like if you wanted a really deep red, um, red and umber is really nice together. All right, artists, so I'm going to do a pink hydrangea. So I've got my piles here. So again, I would have at least three different. And then of course you have um, just pure white that you can always dip into. And it's okay if your brush isn't super clean. So I've got pink on my brush and we're gonna start just dipping and dabbing. Go over top of your lines first. Oh, sorry. The leaf there, try not to go too far into it. You can go over top though, because you don't want to have any, um, any of my lines showing. So what you would do then is just make your hydrangea larger or your leaf larger, I should say. So go over top. We want our hydrangea to be nice and big. And again, if you have too much paint on your brush, you can always wipe it out before you switch to a new color. There's an, or a new tint, I should say. There's no need to rinse unless you are switching colors. So again, artists, don't even think about this. This is a game. We're just simply filling up white space in our hydrangea. That's it. No thought needed other than where's that white? want it even more light just add some white to your brush and 
And I am flipping my brush because I have paint on both sides. So artists, if you do have a question, please unmute your mic so that I can hear you because most of the time my eyes are on my canvas. And we're just filling in white space. That's all we're doing. If your colors are starting to look too similar, your pinks are starting to look too similar, either add some dark pink or blue or whatever to it, whatever color you're using, or lighter. You need that contrast to break it up. So next week with the pink moon, I am starting to um, include an entire set of paints rather than just the colors I think you will need. Um, the amount that you get if you register for the pink moon will be enough for two people or at least two paintings, if not more. We are using a bigger canvas, however, so. So again, this is a game. We're just covering up white space. You can change the direction of your swipes to break up your brush strokes a little bit. How fun is that, right? Don't even think, just do. So again, artists, go outside of your lines a little bit. You don't want to have any of that white canvas showing. And when you're done, we're going to wipe, rinse, and wipe our brush. So remember your action of it swiping your brush. You're actually doing a short brush stroke. So we're not dabbing or tashing. You actually want to create the visual effect of a petal almost. And we're not even being precise with where these petals are. I know that when you actually get a beautiful hydrangea that you can see each individual um, blossom, I guess. We're just, this is a painting. It's not meant to be perfect. That's what photography is for. In my opinion. So artists, I bet you think that we're going to go on to this leaf but we're not. We're actually gonna go on to hydrange number four next. So this is where you could take your color from hydrangea number one and fill it all up, or you could do an entirely new color, it's up to you. I am going to go back to my blue just because I like it, um, and we're just going to fill it up again. So nothing different than what we did before. We're just going to take our colors and take the same size of brush. So I'm gonna start with my dark blue, and I'm just going to swipe. So again, it's a swipe, not a dab. A dab will give you an entirely different mark. So remember that swipe mark. Now this is the biggest hydrangea on our canvas. So this one is going to take us a little bit more time and a little bit more paint. I think last time we did this, um, we had an artist who uh, ended up making like a multicolored hydrangea, uh, taking like the three different colors that they had already done and just mixing it up. It turned out really pretty. I mean, this is your piece. Just enjoy laying down the paint. So again, it's a game, right? We're trying to fill up the white space. We're going over top of our other hydrangeas just a little bit to make it look like it's overlapping. The whole point of layering. And 
and you may want to break it up with some white. And this is just really random right now, we're not even thinking. Think of it as a game, we're just filling in that white space. You can turn your brush, change your direction a little bit. When you get to this leaf, get as close as you can, if not just over top of those lines. You don't want to paint the whole thing or get too far in because we are still using acrylic paint. You can see the layers through. But do make sure that you're doing a swipe and not a dab. You want to make that short little brush stroke to make it look like you've got the petal. And yes, you are going to go over top or outside of your canvas a bit. So make sure you get those sides. And just keep changing your colors up. Don't even think about it. You're changing your tints up, I should say. Just enjoy laying down your paint. Again, it's a game, just filling in the white space. Don't even want you to think about, oh, that didn't look good. Don't worry, that first couple of strokes that you do, you won't even see them. Do mix it up, lay your brush down at various spots in your hydrangea so it doesn't look too much like one color. If it is starting to look too much like one color, you may need to clean your brush out, so at least wipe it out, if not rinse it out if you want to. So again, just kind of take a step back, and look and see if you can see any of your canvas. And we're just trying to fill it all up in that little tiny spot. Okay, when you are happy with that, you can wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush, and then we are going to go on to our last leaf. Artists, we might be done this sooner than I thought. You're all amazing. So, at our workshops, we usually are able to take pictures at the end and show off how well our artists have done. Because we can't, I would love it if you would send us a picture of you and your masterpiece, or just your masterpiece. But we love to show that anyone can create art. You just need the right materials, um, good instruction, and just time to simply unwind and relax and just enjoy laying down your paint. That's all. And so artists, for our last hydrangea, you could, I mean, it's not touching so much that you could probably do the same color as you did hydrangea number three. You probably could get away with it, but you may want to go back to what the color that you did for hydrangea number two. Uh, you may want to do an entirely new color. That's up to you. I have quite a bit of white left. I think I'm going to just really lighten my pink. So I'm gonna make it super duper light, almost like the palest color, tint of pink that I can. Actually, I could even make a softer purple if I wanted to. So artists, this is the fun part of this painting, is you actually get to create your own colors. You never have to do what we're doing or what I'm doing.
and you may just want to really, really lighten it up. Artists, you will need some of that white left over for the last um, step of your leaves. And before we go on to our last hydrangea, we actually do need to paint this leaf. I just want to give time for hydrangea number three and number four to dry a little bit before we get in there with our brush. Sorry. So artists, when you've got hydrangea number four done, and you've chosen your last color, so maybe you wanna just lighten up a lot, one of the colors you used before. Then we're going to go on to our last leaf. Or we start hydrangea number five. So remember, do wipe, rinse, and wipe your brush out. You don't want to have painted water and you don't want to have watery paint. You don't even have to use paper towel. If you have an old rag or something, an old t-shirt at home, it can start to become your paint rag. All right, artists, and when you're ready, we're going to take some uh, of that green paint on our brush and we are going to, again, outline first very gently and slowly. Use your brush, let it do the work for you, and then we're going to fill in. top of your lines just a little bit so again we're not done our leaves we just need to add some highlights to them later but just at least fill it in and artists if you do want to sorry I'm looking back now would be a good time to go back and do any touch-ups on your other leaves if you want to before we start adding the highlight so if you do want to go back and add touch-ups to your other leaves, you can do that. Just be careful not to paint over top of your hydrangea petals. We've done this layering in an order for a reason. So if you do want to go back and just touch up your other leaves, you can, but don't touch those other petals, okay? And don't worry about it too much if if you do though okay so all of our leaves should be done we should have hydrangea number one two three and four done and we're going to go on to our last hydrangea artists please let me know if you're not ready and you can actually do this masterpiece obviously with any size of canvas, but really any shape of canvas too. All you need, I mean, you don't even need, okay, the hydrangea were just like fluffy round clouds is all they were. You could even just do circles just to give you that little bit of a guide and understand that you don't want them to be perfect round circles. You wanna go outside of your lines a little bit, but I could also see this on a really thin canvas with hydrangea going up the side. That would be really pretty too. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So when you're ready, you can start on your last hydrangea and the last petals. So I did a really light, light pink. Now, if you get to this green, please wait until it's dry before you lay down your brush because you will smudge it together. And if you have pink, you're going to get a really crummy color. If you're, if you did this one purple and this one yellow, um, or vice versa, again, just watch that you're not smudging those two together. 
because colors that are not beside each other on the color wheel, if you mix them together, you'll end up making, when we taught classes to the little kids, we just called it mud. It just doesn't, I mean, honestly, that's usually how you get the earth tones, really. So again, artists, just lay down your paint. Enjoy that process. And just that action of filling in white space. Don't even think about it too much. And again, it's swiping or wiping your brush. Sorry, I was thinking a little too much there. We don't want to think, we just want to swipe. No thinking, just swiping. some blue mixed in there. Okay, it looks kind of cool. And artists, if your pink or your blue or whatever is starting to look all the same, you either need more white or more of your darker color. Go over top just a little bit, not a lot. We don't want to fill up your other Artists, when you're done that, just take a little bit of a, of a step back, of a look back, and just make sure that your hydrangeas are exactly as you would like them to be. And I'll give you a few more minutes to finish up your last hydrangea, or to add any touch-ups maybe to your other hydrangeas. I thought you guys would have a lot more questions for me. Do, of course, make sure that your brushes are really clean, especially if they're sitting out. If you're not using them, acrylic paint does dry like a plastic, so uh, trying to get that plastic out of your bristles is uh, a task. Sometimes it can't even be done. I can't wait to see your masterpieces. I do hope that you take a moment to send me a picture, snap a photo, you can share it at the end. That would be lovely. Don't worry, I won't put your shares on our um, on our video link. However, I might share them on our Facebook uh, if you email them to me, just because I think it's really important that everybody see how easy this is right and and not to say that it's easy but that it's you know it's time to let go and to just create and honestly not even worry about it i need you to remember van gogh only sold i think he sold one painting in his lifetime maybe he wasn't a super famous artist 
and no one really liked his art. And now he won. But lots of people love his art. I shouldn't say everyone. I mean, I love Van Gogh, but I don't like Picasso. And a lot of people love Picasso, so it's not my thing. And that's okay. All right, artists. When you're ready, we're going to move on to our final step for our leaves. So what we're going to do first is I need you to decide where your light is coming from. So my light is going to come from the top, which means that any leaf that has a top side, actually, I'm going to change it up a bit. Um, let's do it the top left. So my light is going to come from over here. Now, this might be getting a little bit more technical. I don't even want you to worry about it if it is. But what I'd like for you to do is with your green, I'd like you to add some white to it or some yellow. Either way, we just want to make this green different. So I'm going to add some more yellow to my green to brighten it up. If you add white, it'll make it more pale, which is totally fine. If you add yellow, it'll make it more limey or bright. And we are just going to um, paint literally half of our leaf. Now you don't want to have a fat brush for this, so either make sure that you are wiping out your brush really, really well, or you're cleaning it really, really well, and your bristles are together. You can move to a smaller brush if you have one. If Again, I'm just using two brushes, so I'm using my smallest brush. Now there's two different ways you can go about this. You can go and you can outline half of your um, leaf and then fill it in if you want, or you can just take your brush with your color on the tip and you're going to land your brush about halfway of your leaf and take your strokes out towards the edge of your leaf. And that's just going to give it a little bit of a highlight. So I'm going to do it here as well. Sorry, I just said did that line to help me, but you can do that if you want. And again, if you want to pull that line halfway down, and I'm going to do only one side. You can do both sides if you want. Try not to paint over top of your petals. So you might just need to be a little bit more conscious about where your brush lands. And I'm just pulling from that center line out, just to give it a little bit of a contrast. So again, if your brush is taking off your paint, you don't have enough wet paint on your brush. So I always need you to have more wet paint on your brush than you do on your canvas. And we're just going to do this on half of our leaf. If you don't have to, you can do this on your whole leaf if you want to, if you like that contrast. Artist, this is your masterpiece. You decide what you want this to look like. give our leaves a little bit of contrast there, right? So they're not just green blobs. Again, you don't have to do just half. You could take this on both sides if you want to. Just try not to make it look all the same. And then what I'd love for you artists to do is just take a look at your masterpiece. Make sure you've got all of those, uh, all of the canvas filled, even down here, right? You've got your background in this bottom little corner tab here but you know you don't have any canvas showing or any of your lines showing 
you've painted the sides of your canvas and if you haven't you can do that now whatever you do don't let wet paint sit on anything so if you are going to paint the bottom you are going to do so this side of my canvas is dry i'm just going to flip it so i can add some blue on the top here on the side i should say it is i guess it doesn't really matter you can put your painting however you want to You may even just want to take your gray background color or even just black too. I've had people do that and paint the sides of your canvas. If you are going to do an entirely different color, please take your brush and pull it from the back to the front so that you don't, um, and try to pull it out when you get to the, to the outer edge, the front edge, because you don't want to get that gray on the front of your painting, okay? All that does, artists, is it just makes it look a little bit more finished when you do hang it in your house. And even just flipping it, you look at your painting in an entirely different perspective, and it might give you a new view, you might say, oh, hey, I forgot that spot there, or there needs to be more pink here. Oh, I almost put my brush in my teeth. <laughs> that would have been yummy. So artists, that's it for your Hydrangea Masterpiece. I am not gonna go away, I'm gonna stay online, but if you are finished, um, I guess, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us on our second live painting workshop. I do hope to continue these on a weekly basis, uh, if not at least one every weekend. If um, We're doing two this weekend. We're doing the bunny tomorrow. If you would like to join us next week, we are doing our Pink Moon Masterpiece on Saturday afternoon. I am going to do it on a large canvas on a 16 by 20. So if you are going to go purchase your own art supplies, you could get that size of canvas, but you don't have to. You can get any size of canvas that you want. I would just make sure that you have at least a one inch brush so that you can do that wash, that background um, quite quickly. And I'm also just going to use my medium brush, the exact same sizes that I did today. So I'm not even going to use a small brush next week. If you would like to register for that one, you can head to our website at smudgeart.ca, the exact same place that you registered for, for this one. Your materials. You will please want to, for your brushes, they're your brushes, but of course you will want to make sure that they're very clean. So do wipe that paint out first, Wrap the bristles on the bottom, and then you want to wash them off with warm, soapy water. You don't want it to be hot. The hot water will dry out the bristles, and you don't want it to be cold. It will rinse out the paint. So you want it to be warm, soapy water. Reshape your bristles. So you always want to, when you're done, reshape your bristles and lay them flat to dry. On that note, if you are finished, uh, please feel free to share your masterpiece with us before you leave or even just send me a photo. I would love to see your masterpieces. I think that's what I miss the most as well. I know that you're there on the other end. That is beautiful. Love it. I don't get to interact with you guys. So that is just stunning. Oh my goodness. See, you guys are amazing. Thank you, Irene. So if you are finished and you would like to go, thank you so much for joining me. I do hope to create with you again soon, if not in person, online. And feel free to email to info at smudgeart.ca or via Facebook or Instagram. I am going to stay on the call so that I'm here for you guys if you have any questions. But otherwise, if you're finished, um, feel free to log off. Thank you all so much.